Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So in today's video, I want to talk to you and give you a little bit of the uh, behind the scenes of what it takes to take 3D brushes and convert them into raster base for Clip Studio Paint. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump in and talk about the process. So this is Blender. Uh, I don't talk about Blender a lot on the channel, but I've been using it a lot more these days. As I mentioned, I'm a big fan of ZBrush sculpting. Uh, I also do, used to do a lot of this 3D type stuff inside of Lightwave. Uh, so I'm learning Blender now and it's absolutely a uh, blast. I, I think that this software is so, uh, I mean, not just entirely powerful. A lot of people obviously are aware of that. Uh, you can check out movies like uh, Next Gen was made in it. Uh, lots of great animation shorts and, and just, just tons of great uh, content out there. You can get this for free. It's open source, which is just blows my mind. Uh, I've had to pay thousands of dollars for 3D software over the years, and, and just to know that this one is super powerful. You can model in it, you can sculpt in it, you can animate in it. It's got a great render engine. They just came out with a new update. But at any rate, another thing that you could do with it, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you can make cool custom brushes. So what this is right here, I'll render this out for you. Uh, using cycles here to render and by the way I was able to do this because I found a very informative video by Joey Carlino showing how to model this uh, barbed wire uh, I'm going to link that in the description box below because if you want you can follow along you can model this exact same thing uh, I you know rendered it differently with the uh, different surfacing and bump mapping uh, that I wanted to use I wanted it to look a little bit more uh, you know kind of beat up or tattered and I could have took that a lot further with nodes and all that and a lot more overlays of, uh, of textures but this was good enough but the the neat thing about it is you can render these out in a in a straight shot straight as you can get it anyways and you might have to edit more on the edges uh, but then you could take this and turn it into a brush and I, I turned it into a clip studio paint brush uh, and it came up awesome and I'll show you that here in a bit uh, super high res because one of the things is you can come over here and you can jump this up to 300% and you can really get a nice high quality render. You can also see this a bit more in real time like this uh, using cycles. But at any rate, I just want to show you this is a really neat way to go about creating brushes even for your raster based programs like Clip Studio. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try Procreate, but I've, I've had a more difficult time getting things to translate into the Procreate app. Clip Studio, I mean, it comes out looking pretty much just like this and you can adjust the colors. Again, I'll show you that here in a bit. I want to show you one more brush that I designed first in 3D, so let me show you that now. All right, so here's some chain links, and uh, with this one, it's basically a similar concept. You know, you're going to start off by making the pattern that you need. You're going to crop off, you know, somewhere in this kind of area, and that's probably the trickiest part with Clip Studio, and you could go shorter as well. You could go about here. You got to keep in mind that if you go with a shorter, repetitive clip, uh, or I'm saying clip, I don't want to sound like I'm saying clip studio, a shorter repetitive brush tip, then you're generally going to get a bigger brush tip, higher res. And again, the beauty of starting here in something like a 3D software like Blender, um, which again, I got to mention is totally open source and free. I, I recommend anybody that's got any slight inclination, they jump in, they start learning Blender. Uh, there's no reason not to. And this 3D knowledge, it, it, there's so much you can do with it, and I'll be sharing more on the channel. I, I don't feel like I'm adequate to teach you how to do uh, this stuff because I fumbled through it. Uh, if it was lightweight, I would have I would have a better shot because I did a lot more in that. Uh, but a lot of the the cool the cool thing is all the information is relatable. You you know, you start remembering what bump maps are and surface textures and UV coordinates and all this jazz. You know, it's just terminology, and then you start to figure out how to you know how it's different than the other softwares you use. But in this particular one, I'll show you a quick render. Um, I didn't make this as gritty or rough, uh, and, and I could definitely add that, and I, I, I'll make variations of it, because I'd like to do one where it looks just like old, rusted, beat up chain. Uh, but I, I went for the shiny chrome, just because it's, it's kind of pretty. Um, but you know, you see that, like it's, it's beautiful looking stuff, because it's all 3D, so there's no loss of quality, and you can output this as big as you need. Uh, but this is more than enough right here. And then again, the trick is inside of something like Clip Studio is getting your edges to blend properly. So you have to look for inconsistencies from one side to the other. This is actually pretty perfect. But as I move for, uh, out more to the sides, the lighting is going to shift. But it's real easy. You crop here, 
you line it up on the, uh, you want to use a two by two canvas on Clip Studio, and then you, you just blend these little edges so that, you know, you copy one, move it over, and then you blend it so that you know that it lines up edge to edge. And then use the ribbon effect, which is a super powerful feature in Clip Studio, which makes these work pretty darn well. So the other thing I'll show you, just in case you are a Blender fan or a 3D fan of some sort, just so you see, one of the things that helped me do this was to line up the chains nice and straight and to make the lighting. I wanted the chrome, if we go back to uh, something you could see visually with the render here and back to the camera, I wanted the chrome to have... Uh, light on both sides because then it makes it better for a brush that works in dark dark to light scenarios uh, So to do that I just made sure to come over here and add uh, a light directly above and directly below And so you can see as I move this around You know you got a light here light here and then the camera in the front I really could have lined the camera up straight But what I, what I noticed is to get a more dimensional chain I wanted there to be, I didn't want it to look like this because that'd be kind of a boring brush. I wanted it to look like this and have a little bit of that depth. But keep in mind, that's where you're gonna have a little more inconsistency is getting your brush tip to work in a raster-based software. Not a big deal, but I just want you to be aware of it. Okay, so now let me show it to you how it, it turned out in Clip Studio. Okay, so now we're back here in Clip Studio and you see these brushes uh, in action. So nice and clean. Uh, Chains are a little wonky because I probably should do the clip, um, the brush tip in a smaller area, uh, probably better for that. But essentially the brushes are gonna generally distort as you pull them around. Uh, so a lot of times I'll do that uh, in multiple kind of uh, tries there. So if I go here, grab one of these brushes. Oh, there's windows, made some windows too, by the way. Uh, so just like this, boom, brush, chains. Viola, voila, whatever you want to say there. But see how that, see how easy it is. I mean, and they're not perfect. You see, I need, I need to still work on my, um, my uh, edge to edge uh, effect. You know, that's how it ribbons uh, together in this software. But I mean, what would that take to blend and paint over? Nothing. You know, just a couple seconds, and and far enough away, you're not even going to see it. So they're super great for saving time on things that you're otherwise going to do over and over again. It all, they also work off pressure sensitivity so you can get a little bit of that foreshortening kind of effect. Again, you might have to paint with them a little bit to really get just the effect you're looking for, uh, but they're gonna save a tremendous amount of time. The one that works really well is the barbed wire brush. That one, I don't even think there's an issue with it. It's pretty seamless. It's because of the nature of the brush. It's like a, a you know, tw uh, threaded wire or whatever, twisted wire. So of course this one is gonna bend and be more pliable. You're gonna be able to pretty much take that wherever you want on the screen and it's gonna work. So there's certain textures and effects that work more easily with brushes. The main thing is that you get this super high quality because you're starting with 3D art. Okay, so you can zoom in there. And now it is still based upon the canvas size. So I'm working at a 1920 by 1080. If I scale up this canvas size to a 4K resolution, these are gonna look even better. And now I'm gonna to have to bear down with as much pressure as I can to get the highest version of that, that thumbnail. So keep that in mind. I mean, shoot, even the end of it kind of looks like it's uh, uh, clipped uh, steel. But anyways, really great application of these brushes. And then just to show you some others that I've done while we're here, I've done some that are drawn. So this is actual chain that I've drawn. And so this is better for a stylistic kind of effect. I did these right here. So again, both of those are drawn. It's actually the same one. I just modified it and put more shadows to the one. Um, so th all sorts of neat brushes that you can make in this software. And just to give you a little bit of uh, understanding of how this actually works, I'll go to the brush tip and walk you through this just a little bit. Uh, so I know a lot of you are probably wanting to learn how to make your own. And although I can't walk you through as much of the Blender stuff, like I said, I'll link to the tutorials I utilize to, you know, to get through that more effectively. But... Uh, I can show you this part. So once you bring your high res artwork over and you're ready to go, uh, you kind of have to uh, you have to do a few steps. So let me show you. So first off, the art is generally going to come over bigger than what you need it. And let me go back a few steps here. Hopefully I got, uh, I don't know that I do. Well, I'm just going to explain it. When I first brought this art over, the art was way past the end of the gray here, okay? Clip Studio actually is aware of that data. Okay, so even though you only see this, it captures data past it. You got to be aware of that. 
So what you have to do is hit Command A. Well, first you have to line it up. So let me let me get that across first. And I did that with lining up some of these ruler uh, ruled lines. So you see, I'm working on some windows there. I don't know why that popped up, but um, so basically, use some of these ruled lines. You can draw your straight lines across. Whatever you, whatever it is, the main thing is that you're going to want to line up the edges right here to the edges over here. Okay, they need to bun up as perfect as possible, and they also need to be seamless color-wise from this area to this area. The way you do that is you copy this, the way I did it anyways, I copied it over, oh, gotta be on that layer, yikes. Hold Alt, drag with the Move tool, there you go. And say I do it again, I didn't do it this way, I actually use the existing middle one in the, you know, because I wanna fix that one, but this is essentially what you have to do. Oh, see, this isn't the final version. This isn't the last one I worked on. But this will give you an idea of, of what to look for. So when you bring it like this, you can see it doesn't line up perfect, right? So this, these are the edits I had to make to get it right. And you really want to zoom in and be critical of this spot because once you get this right, your brush will work a lot better. So there's a couple ways you can look at this. One, you can distort just this area. You don't want to distort the whole thing uh, because you might distort something else on the other end. You want to keep your area focus in this area and try to blend across okay but you can only adjust one not both so at least the way that I do it you have to basically sample from this one and paint on this one and you can lock transparent pixels to this one so that you don't accidentally go outside first you want to fix your edges you see that even the edges are off I could even I guess I could get away with that by uh, painting a solid first or racing back the other one whatever really so Let's do that. This will probably be the easiest way. So I'll take uh, a translucent. Oh, wait, no, I need to add to this one. So let me erase this one. So I'll erase back that edge just a little bit. It doesn't got to be perfect. I mean, obviously, you're really going to have to be up close to see this. But I would, uh, I would only work on one. Keep that in mind. So if I choose the one on the right to be my brush tip, that's the only one I'm going to work on. Because I'm not going to use the one on the left. So if I start editing the one on the left, I've just defeated the purpose, right? And you gotta remember, the one on the left is the back side of the brush on the right, if hopefully that makes sense. So what I would do is I would keep editing this side. Oh, painting with the old brush, hold on. The chain brush, that's not good. So I would use Alt and I would select this. So all this blue, and I could even take this bluish purple color and I could do a reverse of what you see there. I could blend back like this you know, and, I, and all this can be black, right? You see that? That's a pretty simple fix. And I could even come back with a little bit of the blue here if I wanted. A little bit of the gray, whatever. So, but again, I, I need it to match the one on the left. So really, I wouldn't do that. It's got to, you keep working until both these blend together. You can even sample some of the other one like this. Copy it, paste it over here, and soft erase it. Sometimes that's how you're going to get the same color blended evenly over here, but the more you get rid of that line, the better. Okay, so you just keep working on that sampling across, and remember not to add past the outline of it, because once this disappears, this needs to be a flat edge, which you're in turn going to bring right back over to the center of the screen. Bada boom, bada bing, no gaps on the side, because if you see a gap here, you're gonna see it on the uh, illustration. You get that roughly in the center of the screen like that, and then once you've worked out those edges, you basically come over here, right click, convert layer, turn this to a grayscale. This is what allows it to, uh, I can't remember, it allows it to function better. You have to do this. If not, it comes through as a solid, I believe. So, cause you, it's working off grayscale data. So you hit okay there. Now you've got a grayscale, but you also have to invert it. So you go over here, uh, reverse gradient. Like that, it's gonna look all chromey, which is kind of cool, but that's not what you want. That's it's just about getting the gradient the way that you want. Then you go to Edit, Register Material, Image, name it appropriately. I usually, I, I'll be honest, I I start this with like Chain 3D A, B, C, D. Some of these get all the way into G and H before whatever you know before I fix them uh, entirely. So there's a lot of revisions here. Uh, not always, some of them come out good on the first couple tries, but that's more rare. Use for brush tip shape, drop this down, put it under image material, 
brush is. At least that's where I put it. Hit OK. I'm not going to do that because I've already finished this brush. And that essentially gives you a brush tip. Then you come over here to a fresh canvas and you say, OK, I'm ready to rock. I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate one of my existing brushes, especially if it's a brush that it's a similar, like for instance, if it's a ribbon brush, I've already got the settings right here. It makes sense to just duplicate that. So uh, what's this one? Oh, why is that not? Oh, I'm working on some techie shapes. Uh, I'll show you that as soon as I work through them, but I think they're gonna be pretty cool. So here's some windows. I even use the ribbon brush for this because uh, if you put a ruler down and you draw these windows straight across, they're, they're nice and straight and the same size. Uh, so this was a modification of a ribbon brush and I thought it'd be really cool because I could quickly draw again You need a roller in place first. I could quickly draw out or I'll just show you. Where's my uh, rollers command R drop this down draw through here Nice straight windows. Okay, and you'd think that wouldn't work But then you distort those and modify them you guys can let me know if you want to see a video on that But it's there's ways to do it where this will save a lot of time when you have to draw a bunch of Victorian style windows And I'm gonna do different window patterns as well but if you come over to here and then you say duplicate this brush, let me just show you that way you're, I'll, I'll turn this barbed wire one from barbed wire to, um, to chains. So I would duplicate it, I would call it like testing because you can always go back and change the subtool name. Drops down to the bottom. You get into here by grabbing this little wrench. You go into brush tip to start out. Remember, it's already got all these settings from before. Uh, why is it that color? This needs to be white. Like that. So look, there's our barbed wire brush, right? So we go into here under brush tip. We go into here, start off with like, uh, you know, whatever you named it. I'm gonna say chains. Oops. And then I would scroll down to the last one I revisited, which I don't think it was B, but I would've got lucky there, B. And so now there's the chain brush, and then there's other, some other settings. So the, the first thing is you see it's kind of bending a bit awkwardly, uh, that part, I'm going to try to fix that by making the uh, the brush tip not so wide. Okay, but I, I don't know if that'll fix it. It might. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know. If it does fix it, I'll update the brush pack to have that new version. A lot of times, I just get away with playing around with some different pressure and, and redrawing the stroke until I get what I want. And I can always edit a chain link here and there if I need to. Still ends up saving a lot of time. Um, generally they come out better when they're straight like what you could also do with this is you could slightly bend them and then you would edit the chain link where it's going to turn and then erase the other one back that's probably the best way obviously you'd have to delete this one uh, right here and move it over but still that's probably the best way to get what you want but still it's going to save you a lot of time from making this kind of chain link it's actually going onto the ruler right there it's pretty hilarious okay so now uh, so there's other settings. So for instance, let me get rid of this ruler here. Uh, there's other settings that you can think about. The main thing that's making this work this way is the uh, ribbon effect, which is, where is that sucker? Right here. Ribbon repeat method right there. That's what's making this react in this kind of way. So that's, that's a really important feature to play around with in here. The other thing that you want to look at is when you adjust the thickness, you're going to change the width of the actual thing. So like you see that immediately looks better for chains. So I had that too too thin here. Uh, so you want to play around with things like that because if you know if you drop this way down, you can see that's just a horrible looking chain. So if we go back up, what is it? 108. We'll try one 114. Yeah, that's pretty good. But again, these settings are things you're gonna to need to play with. Angle, I don't think we'd want to adjust that, but while we're here, let's try what the ooh, chain mail. Look at that. Boom, instant chain mail. Now you see how these brushes are just so powerful, but you have to you have to play around with them. You gotta figure out uh, what way you can use them in your own workflow. You might have to modify them a bit, but they're they're super effective. Uh, spraying effect, we wouldn't use that. That's gonna be more for particle type effects and stars and you know noise patterns, things like that. You could try it, just see what it does. Kind of mess around. I don't know if it'll even it's a bunch of little chains right there, I guess. Yeah, I don't see that being much of anything, but again, it's good to play around with these settings. Uh, stroke, we've already touched that or talked about that. Brush tip, it's mainly all these ones here. You know, a lot of these other brush settings, let's see, brush size. So here I've got the pressure sensitivity and the tilt. Uh, I honestly don't even know if tilt works on mine. I don't think it does. I don't think I have tilt enabled on my uh, device, but it's there. 
Uh, pin pressure, I definitely like to leave because it gives you this effect. So that's that's something we want to leave enabled inside a uh, brush size there. Uh, ink, that's just opacity. You see, I don't mess with that. It's a solid brush. Um, color jitter. No, see, I use a lot of those for more painterly styles. So at any rate, that's about it. That, I just wanted to give you a brief rundown because, you know, it takes a while to really get the hang of all this, but you just have to mess around with it. It all starts with, you know, coming up with an idea of a brush tip, seeing if you can make it work. Uh, and then, like I said, using Blender to sculpt these was, was really effective. In fact, I'll be doing more of these. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the chain link style. I would like to do some bigger, bulkier chain links. Really just a variety of them. Uh, and that's where you guys can give me ideas. And keep in mind, if you don't want to take the time to go through the tutorials, make your own, uh, learn how to do it inside a Clip Studio here, make your own brushes, that's fine. I'll leave a link in the description box below. You can go to my brush pack and you can get these. So thanks very much for tuning in and watching today's video. If you got any questions, make sure to drop them in the section below. Let me know what you think as well as what you'd like to see in the future. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.